So now I'd like to talk about how you can really say anything about these processes. How can we produce these somewhat you know, unusual Markovian projections? And for that, there's a framework of Paul and Shkolnikov. And it's called the framework of intertwining diffusions. So let me describe this framework. The idea is that you abstractly start with two diffusion processes, x and y. And what you ask for is conditions under which a third process, z, will couple both of them. So our setting, y will be the, the Laguerre eigenvalues process at a certain level, and x will be the process that we've constructed at all lower levels. And what we want to find is a process z, which would be the laguerre warren process, that couples them and has all the properties we want. OK, so let's, let's move to this more abstract setting. We just have two processes with these generators. And they're going to live on a certain domain, which in our case will just be the galfon setlin uh, polytope, or galfon setlin cone. Now what I want is that there's some sort of relation, some sort of notion of Gibbs restriction from measures on the top level to measures on the lower level. And that's going to be implemented by this, uh, this Gibbs density lambda. And in, in their framework, it's called a link function. OK, so what they define is that a process z is an intertwining of the diffusions x and y, essentially if it has the properties that we want. So in particular, if I project to the first coordinate, I should recover x. Project to the second coordinate, I should recover y. That means that I have a coupling of x and y. Second, what I want is that the initial conditions are Gibbs. And actually, all conditions are Gibbs. So that's, that's properties 1 and, uh, and, and uh, sorry, 4. And the second thing I want is that actually it provides a coupling. So that's property 2, which is uh, just the condition for two Markov process to be coupled. And finally, what I want is that the process x somehow evolves independently. So really, all the coupling is happening with the process y. And this is going to correspond to the fact that if you look at the laguerre warren process, the first you know, k levels evolve independently of the k plus first level. So really, all the action is happening at the top level, which would be y here. How does this differ from some of the other things, like the diagonal scale or the Markov function? Uh, this is actually quite, quite similar. Um, it's, it's, it's a bit more restrictive. Um, and the upshot is that we're going to give a theorem which allows for construction of these intertwining diffusions under some weaker conditions. So in, in particular, condition two is very similar to this Pittman, Pittman condition. OK, so what we're going to do is give a general construction of a z which intertwines x and y under certain conditions. So Here's, it's going to be presented as a solution to a certain stochastic differential equation with reflection. So here's the equation. First, for z1, the equation is just simply the exact same as the condition, as the equation for x. And that corresponds to the fact that x and z1 should evolve in, in the same way. OK, now for z2, the second coordinate, I take the same driving terms as for y. And then I add this correction term, some, some drift, which somehow should correspond to uh, the push from reflection off x. And third, I have uh, actual reflection off x. OK, so this is some complicated stochastic differential equation with three terms. So this, this, this corresponds to the coupling with x. And this is some term which enforces reflection off x. OK. And perhaps you can see it more clearly, the generator for this diffusion z is simply that I evolve x, I evolve y, and then I evolve y a little bit more because I'm trying to couple the two processes. OK. And I'm going to want a special property on this, uh, on this process as a diffusion. What I'm going to want is that, well, first of all, its domain always contains these functions. So these are compactly supported functions which obey a certain Neumann condition. And the property I want is that I'll call a diffusion z regular if this domain is actually a core for its generator. Okay, so this is a certain technical condition on Markov process. 
And so here's our result, which is, let's suppose that there's some you know, technical but not so important conditions on the domain and the two diffusions. Now importantly, suppose that uh, the solution z to this, so this stochastic differential equation is a regular Feller diffusion with the specified generator, and also any f in this core satisfies this slightly horrific looking identity between integrals. Then in this case, z is gonna be an intertwining of x and y for Gibbs initial conditions. Okay, so this is somewhat technical result, and it's gonna generalize the result of Paul and Shkolnikov in the case where all, all diffusions were driven by Brownian motions. And so I wanna unpack this, uh, this condition a little bit more. So for now, just imagine it's some big, inequal big equality between integrals. So it's actually implied by three conditions which I think are a bit more interpretable. The first is that the generators should be intertwined by this Gibbs restriction lambda. So you should think of this first condition as some sort of differential version of this Pittman uh, intertwining. Uh, then there are two conditions which are related to the fact that Z is a process with reflection. And so, in particular, it's reflection off a domain which depends on the top level. So this corresponds to the fact that in the galphon seven polytope, if I fix the top level, the domain of the lower levels actually changes. And so there should be some compatibility between the, uh, the drift and diffusion terms and the way that the geometry of this shifting domain changes. And so, for certain reasons, these are the two conditions that you end up wanting to check. And in fact, in our cases, in, in most cases, both sides are just equal to zero. But somehow this, this expresses some compatibility between the geometry of the space and the actual diffusions that you're running. So I think basically the, the first condition is interpretable and these are a bit less interpretable. But I will say that in the case where the driving terms are simply Brownian motions, they reduce to just the conditions that were considered by Paul and Schoenberg. Okay, and so I wanna talk a little bit about, just very briefly about how to prove this result. So first, the, the only thing that you need to prove is actually, or the key point that you need to prove is that the process Z is gonna preserve Gibbs measures. And in fact, the, what you need to show there is that for any function, somehow this identity holds. Which means that if you evolve the process and apply the function, that's the same thing as just evolving the top level of the process and finding the expectation of the function. So, yeah, so, so the, this first corresponds to just evolving the top level and finding the, expect, the expectation of the function, and the second evolves, corresponds to evolving the whole process and finding the expectation of the function. And if you actually take the infinitesimal version of this identity, what you'll see is that you want to prove this somewhat easier identity. So it's some sort of relation between the generators of Y and the generator of Z. And so if you unpack this, you'll see naturally this intertwining condition between the, the generators of x and y and this link function. And also you'll see that if you try to prove this by integration by parts, what you'll obtain is, first of all, this thing, and if you unpack this thing, you'll see that you obtain these geometric compatibility terms. And so that, that's the reason why I say that these are somehow a relation between the domain of the diffusions and the actual, diffu and the actual uh, driving terms of the diffusions. Okay, so I think I ended quite a bit early, but just to sum up, basically what we did in this talk is first to relate the static structure of eigenvalue densities to the branching of, that comes from some special functions from representation theory, so the multivariate Bessel and hecht nonton functions. And that applied at beta equals one and two and somehow provides some continuation in beta of these matrix models. And in the second part of the talk, we talked about at beta equals two, a dynamical construction for that reduces at a fixed time 
to these eigenvalue densities. All right, so that's it. Questions? Yeah, so one thing you can do is take a complex Brownian motion in the space of n by n Hermitian matrices. And then you can look at, for example, the eigenvalues and then the eigenvalues of the n by 1 times n by 1 principal submatrix. And so it was shown that that's Markov. But let's say you take the eigenvalues, the eigenvalues of the n by 1 by n by 1 matrix and the eigenvalues of the n by 2 by n by 2 matrix. Then for some reason, that's not Markov. And in fact, if you take you know, any, k of, any k principal submatrices where k is greater than 2, then it's also not Markov. What question? Yeah. Uh, so in the, in the first part of the talk, the, the branch ring structure is very similar as for the Schwarzschild set, in which one can, there is a canonical way to construct dynamics. Um, can you do the same here? And I think the answer is yes. Um, I think, however, I think the stochastic calculus gets, so the dynamics would have some, would be continuum time and continuum space. And I think the stochastic calculus can get kind of complicated. So in the, for Dyson Brownian motion, there's beta deformation of it, which was in this paper of Gorin and Shkolnikov. And there, somehow the processes are very different than in the beta two equals two case. For example, each particle will not have local interactions. Instead, the particle will depend on all particles on that level and the level below it. So this, these processes get a bit more complicated. I, I, yeah, I, I, I want to do that, but I have not done it. Yeah, yeah, there is some actually determinantal formula for like the joint distribution of the, the right edge. Other questions? If not, let's thank you again. <laughs> <laughs>